fatwood. What an amazing resource for the fire maker. Today, we're gonna to put it to the ultimate test on this beautiful, soaking wet day in the wilderness of the Pacific Northwest. We're gonna show you how to find it, how to process it, we're even going to show you how to turn it into a torch using some methods that you've probably never seen before. And that's coming up. Welcome to Wilderness Strong. It's cold and it's wet. And today we're talking about fatwood. Now everybody wants fatwood. That's because it's easy to ignite. It burns for a long time and it's incredibly resistant to moisture. In fact, I think it's one of the greatest gifts nature ever gave the fire maker. Now let's go get some. So fatwood is basically just wood that's got large deposits of resin that has settled into it. The resin preserves the wood, makes it extremely flammable, and that's why outdoorsmen want to get their hands on it so bad. We're about to show you exactly how to spot these fatwood treasures and how to load up on it in a large quantity. When we look for fatwood, we're looking for rotten stumps with spires sticking up out of them. This stump only had a couple spires, or as I call them, fatwood flags. The more flags, the better, but even if there's only a couple, you can most likely still find plenty of treasure underneath. Many times the flag itself is fatwood, but sometimes it just points you down to where the fatwood treasure is buried. In the case of this stump, the latter ended up being true. A lot of people only associate fatwood with pine trees, but Douglas fir is also a member of the pine family and it's been our primary source of fatwood for decades. It's very common that people harvest it by cutting at the base of some branches from a downed tree. And that can definitely work if you've got time and energy to try out several branches and if you only need some smaller quantities. But we've had way more success by simply cutting it out of rotten stumps. Not only is it easier to spot initially because of the fatwood flag sticking up, basically telling you right where the treasure is buried, but it's much more likely that you'll strike gold and in bigger quantities using rotten stumps and with less effort than sawing off a bunch of branches. We've also learned that the rotten stumps provide way easier access to get down into the fatwood. Now there's a couple different methods for getting fatwood from stumps. With this stump you can see how quick and easy it was to just hack off a few fat sticks for a fire. And there isn't really too much technique involved with this method. You just need to dig down a little bit around the base of the stump to expose the fatwood. And from there it's just a matter of chopping out the sticks that you need. This is if you just need a few sticks for a fire and you're not really planning on harvesting any large quantities. You'll know you found it when you see that nice rosy red and yellow color. The fresh pine smell is also pretty unmistakable. It smells so good to me that sometimes I'm worried that I might just go ahead and bite into it. It's one of my favorite smells for sure. Now this stump here was an amazing find. The spires sticking up out of this rotten stump were a near giveaway that fatwood was being hidden within. Again, we're gonna start by just busting out as much rotten wood as possible, but we're gonna show a different technique here for acquiring larger fatwood sticks and in greater quantities. This technique involves digging down as deep as you can and then treating the stump as if you're chopping down a tree. The further you can chop into it at the bottom, the easier the splitting is gonna be from the top. And you'll have a lot more control over how wide you wanna split your sticks. I almost can't help but compare so many things like this in nature to a treasure hunt. No matter how many times we've done this exact thing, we still get excited when we come across a find like this. It always feels like we struck gold and we value it like a treasure. Right here, we're just appreciating how both samples are basically the same age. Perfect example of how the resin preserves the wood. And of course, that means it's gonna be a great fire starter. This stump here was the find of the day. I went ahead and named it Fatwood Castle. The long resin-filled spires sticking up were like giant banners announcing to us that a fatwood treasure was hidden here. Now let's cut this castle down.
This was definitely the juiciest fatwood of the day. It looked a little bit to me like fresh salmon. I was just thinking how amazing it was that without too much effort, we could pull this much fat wood in such a short amount of time. We had some ideas for a few different types of torches and lamps that we wanted to make, so we cut ourselves a big pile of medium-sized sticks. Then we needed a couple of handles for our torches. This ocean spray tree worked perfect. Ocean spray is straight, hard, and very strong. Now there's a few types of torches that we like to make. This version is our regular size torch which can burn for up to 30 minutes on just fat wood without adding any fuel. These pieces are cut about 20 inches long and they're about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. There were just a couple tricks to putting this very simple torch together. First, the sticks needed to be what we consider medium sized sticks. So three quarters of an inch to an inch thick and about 20 inches long. Second, the sticks don't have to be the exact same length, but when you wrap them, you want the tips of the sticks to be even at the top of the torch they can feed off of each other evenly. You also don't need to insert your handle more than about six inches or so before you wrap it. Finally, you definitely need to space the sticks out at the top of the torch so the fire can breathe. Like any fire, you don't want to choke it out by wrapping your bundle too tight. We could have used some modern cordage that we had, but why not use these wet cedar roots? Plenty strong for the job at hand and a nice reminder of how generous nature is in providing the resources that we always need. This is a creation that we call Mega Torch, and you can see why. This is not the kind of torch you carry around in your backpack, but it definitely has a place in our torch family because of the specific role that it plays. First of all, Mega Torch can burn for up to 45 minutes, and despite its size, it's actually extremely light. If we were ever in a situation where we unexpectedly needed some long-lasting light, we could gather fat wood from stumps and take about 30 minutes to construct a Mega Torch. The fat sticks on this one are about 30 inches long and about an inch in diameter. But the most important feature may be the way the fat sticks are tied and layered, creating burning phases as the flame works its way down the torch. The other thing you might notice is that the handle itself is just a giant fatwood stick. Mega Torch reminds me again how valuable it is to know where to get large, long quantities of fatwood. That's honestly what we felt the most excited about sharing. Collecting fatwood from rotten stumps is quick, reliable, and produces large quantities without a ton of time and effort. Now this is the torch right here that was a game changer for us. For many years, we didn't really bother making too many torches because it just wasn't practical enough for being on the go like we usually are. We tried to pack light, not have bulky things in our packs, slowing us down. And then we came up with this simple design for miniature torches with fat sticks cut only about 12 inches, half an inch thick, and these mini handles tucked inside of them all ready to go at a moment's notice. I mean, we barely even notice that we're carrying them until we need them. Each bundle burns about 12 minutes and we can quickly, easily put together a few bundles and throw them in a pack. We make the handle just long enough to keep the flame away from our hand, but short enough that we can insert the torch into a larger handle for more control. Now I really wanted this small, portable, little torch that I could continually fuel using little fatwood sticks from my pocket. So we came up with this torch, which is a clay fire bowl, and it'll burn about 30 minutes when it's full of fatwood sticks. You see our collection of torches here, there's also a clay fire bowl right in the front. We just filled that with pitch and didn't bother putting a handle on it. Now that we got our torches made, we're gonna light them up in a couple different ways. First, we're gonna go with the Aboriginal method, get a hand drill fire going, we're gonna transfer it into a fire carrier and show you how to light up a torch from a fire carrier. The second is we're just gonna light it up with a flint and steel so you can see how quick to ignite the shavings are from a fatwood stick. So why would we ever need a torch? Well, for one, they're incredibly fun to make. We can stick them around camp, create some wild adventure type of atmosphere. But aside from all that, torches have all kinds of practical uses. They can literally be a lifesaver in a survival situation when you have to travel unexpectedly in the dark. Also for day hunting rabbits, they can be used to locate and flush rabbits from their dark hiding places. They've been used for night hunting frogs and fish. And we've also used them to confuse and freeze deer in the dark by waving them back and forth, creating moving shadows which can literally stop deer right in their tracks and make them easy targets for hunting in a survival situation. We've done this out in the wild, not for hunting, but just to see how close we could get to a deer. And we came within just about 10 feet, which would be a pretty easy target for a spear.
it's always right at this point in a project where I can't help but just feel extremely happy. There's something exciting about the anticipation you feel just moments before you put your creation to the test. We knew this fatwood torch would go up in flames pretty quick and burn for some time. Personally, I was surprised at how long and bright these torches burn. I was even more surprised at the extreme sense of fun and fulfillment that I felt making a torch, lighting it, and walking around the forest. And if you've never walked through the dark holding a popping, crackling torch, you should put it on your to-do list. It makes you feel like you're Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I was honestly caught off guard at just how content it all made me. Which reminds me now of the inexplicable power that nature has to just work its way into our being and flush out the stress and anxiety and sadness and replace it with hope and light and positivity. But ultimately, we take on projects like this and we share them because nature brings us strength. Now let's light up some more torches. Now, if you enjoyed this video, let us know by hitting the like button, subscribing, and leaving us a comment. We are on a mission to provide motivational and uplifting content related to nature, adventure, and wilderness survival that will hopefully inspire you to join us on our quest and draw strength from the wilderness. Thanks for watching.